Hmm? Can you hear the fan? That's our fan. <laughs> we have our fan base. Hello, and welcome to It Has Nothing to Do with Age and Gender with your hosts, Frank and Tony. And Frank, why don't you introduce our beautiful guest? It'd be an honor. Thank you, Tony, for uh, allowing me to introduce our guest. As you know, this show is about mental toughness. And Kathy Rome fits the bill entirely. So we're going to talk a little bit about her accomplishments as well as how she got to where she, how she got to, the, how she got there essentially. But before I do so, Kathy, what I'd like you to do, um, before you give me a definition of mental toughness, okay, I'd like you to respond to this quote by Herman Melville. I think it fits, and you could relate this to yourself at some point in your life. And I think you'll like the quote. We cannot live for ourselves alone. Our lives are connected by a thousand invisible threads. And all along these sympathetic fibers, our actions run as causes and return to us as results. I can repeat it if you like. Now, I was hoping it would be what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That would be easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to talk about that, that'd be okay too. Can you repeat the question? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, we cannot live for ourselves alone. Our lives are connected by a thousand invisible threads. And along these sympathetic fibers, our actions run as causes and return to us as results. So, <clears throat> and this relates to endurance riding. It can relate to anything. Relate to to your anything. life. Your life. Gosh, your life. I wish you were starting with an easier one. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to respond to that. You're probably sorry you asked me here. You want to read it? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Um, it's a hard one. It is. It was long. Mental toughness. Can we just go there? Mental toughness. Let's start with mental toughness. Yeah, you've got to be mentally tough for starters to become involved with Arabian horses. As I found out, it's not an easy battle because primarily horse people, unless you're in endurance, they think Arabians are crazy and why would you go there? And of course my answer is, well, I'm crazy too. And I think it's a natural progression when you have an Arabian horse because they have so much energy, it's like, why am I riding in circles? Let's go 100 miles. And then you become one of those many threads with all the other endurance people out there and the supportive community and, and a belief in to finish is to win, which is totally true. And just the involvement with the endurance community and the horse lovers and your horse, of course, because you're true partners, true partners, in every sense of the word. And um, it just kind of all ties in. So we cannot live for ourselves alone. So relate that to your horse. Well, Actually, I, before, oh. before you do, Kathy has won the Tevis and she also has won the Hagen Cup, both. So on two different horses. So. Is there one of the one horse, maybe the Hagen Cup horse, or is it the Tevis Cup horse that you'd like to? Tevis, Tevis, Fifi Dior, my my Tevis mare. She's a cougar. May I do bloodlines? That won't bore people. She's a cougar's gold daughter. To, you have to explain this to <laughs> our to our to our viewers. Okay, Bezatal, a purebred Arabian stallion, mostly of Egyptian background, was one of the most successful Arabian endurance stallions ever, and his son. Cougar Rock is the sire of Cougar's Gold, who is a sire of Fifi. Fifi's dam is a product of Almara breeding, who is Basie Tankersley, who believe that all Arabians should be ridden. They shouldn't just be show showboats. Can you explain this a little bit slower? Oh, and, and <laughs> we don't have a, a board to 
write all the names I should down. have brought my chart, huh? A chart, yeah. A chart. So at yeah. any rate, I find it fascinating to to equate the uh, hor in any given horse's bloodlines, be it an Arabian or not, but primarily the Arabians do the best, which bloodlines do the best in endurance because it's a long way. 100 miles is a long way. 25 miles can be a long way if, you know, if you're not used to it. And so my fa my Tevis mare was a purebred Arabian. The mare on which on whom I won the Hagen Cup is what they call a Shaggy Arabian, and that's a registry out of Hungary. Her sire is an imported stallion named Oman, and her dam is an American bred mare named Cami. And uh, Fayette de Cameo was that mare's name, a big bay, and she was just like riding a machine. She was just so big and tough, and it was wonderful to ride her. You know, Tony, it just occurred to me that not everybody knows about the Tevis Cup. <gasps> Why don't you start talking about the Tevis Cup, and then we can talk about the Hagen Cup, too. Okay. Right? And, and the differences. Do you want to go? Well, I can tell you what the Tevis, the Tevis Cup is a 100-mile ride. Squaw Valley, Auburn. It's always in July or early August on a full moon. It was started in 1955 by <laughs> Wendell Roby on some sort of a bed of some sort. There's a lot of stories on how yeah. it actually started, but he started it, and I think there was four, four initial riders, and basically he's at least at least four. Yeah. Basically, Wendell's I it was it says these. Horses are tough, and they should be. They can go 100 miles in one day. And he was going to prove it over the old immigrant trail that he wanted to preserve, and uh, and they did it. They just went up there on their own and said, "Let's ride to Auburn." And why not? Why not? <laughs> Nothing else to <laughs> yeah. do all day. But it was a little more complicated than that, right? Mm. Yeah, it was well, a well, bet. He he posted <laughs> something in our, in Western Horseman to a fellow in the middle of our country who raised thoroughbreds. And this fellow was next cavalryman, and he said that your California horses are a bunch of wimps, and there's no way that they can do 100 miles in one day. Come on out here and do it. And Wendell said, no, you come out here because it's a tougher course. Anybody can ride 100 miles back there. So the fellow never did come out, and Wendell said, you know, this sounds like a really good idea anyway. <laughs> Why would it not? So um, that was it, 55. And I believe it was 1968 was the... First year they did the Hagen Cup, which is among the top 10 horses who finish and vet through at the end of 100 miles are deemed fit to continue. Explain the vetting through. The vetting through, you come into a vet check and the horse's pulse has to drop to a specific criteria, most more often than not at 60 beats per minute. And you get, once you can, it's called a gate and go hold, this right? You come in a gate and once your horse pulses down, there's a timer, you'll, you'll say pulse and they'll come take your horse's pulse. And if you're at 60 or below, they yell time, you come over to a vet, and the vet checks. Do you want, do you want me to go into all these details? Yes, yeah, slowly, okay, slowly, they, slowly. They do the pulse again, and they take one reading, and then they do capillary and membrane refill, skin tanning for hydration, back and withers to make sure that there's no tack galls or wounds and make sure your horse is comfortable. And after a minute's up, you trot your horse out Oh, I can't remember. 100 feet, I think it is, or 100 yards. Uh, no, 100 feet. I'm trying to remember what they call that. I can't, it's I can't a cardiac card recovery yeah, index. Yeah. Cardiac recovery. <laughs> CRI. CRI. Yeah, CRI. And so you come back, and the vet <laughs> takes the horse's pulse again for 15 seconds, and it should be what it was the first time or lower, or lower. ideally. If it's more than four mm. beats higher, you may be in trouble. And then you're deemed fit to continue, and that holds true at all the vet checks throughout Tevis. And at the end, you come in to the Auburn Overlook in the dark. <laughs> and it's a beautiful thing because finally you can get off for the last time. And they check your horse if you're fit conti to continue. You go back to the vets. They check you one more time. Then the next day, there's an accumulation of all. They watch you. There's the Hagen Cup Committee, and they watch you all through the ride and take notes on if you're a nice person. <laughs> how well you take care of your horse, how courteous you are. There's a lot to it because it's a horsemanship award, as well as how fast you went through. And then the next day, Sunday, at the fairgrounds here on the track, you trot your horses out in a really big circle, 
two ways and then up and down and ask me how tired your legs are after 100 miles and then you get to trot. But depending on how your horse shows, they figure out who's the best and the most fit to continue for another 100 miles supposedly and that's the Hagen Cup. Now, Tony, what strikes me is that there's a concern for the horse. Now, you've done this ride more than Kathy and myself. So, who checked you? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad part. It's always, you, you trot your you're, horse out and you're... <laughs> we're, well, technically, <laughs> technically, we're supposed to be smart enough to know when we're something wrong with us. There's the rub. And, that's the ru and there is, you know, that we're, you know, not all of us are. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep going until. But, you know. Yeah. You're on your own. Well, I got So no pulled. one ever checked you? No. Uh, but only my wife. Yeah. What would she say? Uh, get slow, on the horse. Slow down. Take okay, up call. She said take up call. She said no. you're going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay, so. This year's Tevis is on the 20th, and so let's say on the 21st, the Sunday, what time should somebody like to see the judging of the Hagen Cup, because that's interesting. It is very and interesting. Mm -hmm. What would you tell an individual to look for by coming out on the 21st? At um, I'd say show up at 10, I believe that's the time, and sit in the stands. It's just yeah. they have it in the infield where the racetrack is. And if you can, bring binoculars because you can watch, you know, and see what the vets are doing. And they all get together in confab and they <laughs> take notes and compare notes. And the riders <laughs> always stand there going, ging, 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 hoping everything is good. We're trying to overhear what they're saying is what we're exactly. doing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear you say the best horse you've ever seen? That's <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> and then you can watch them trot. And it's a really, really big circle because they want to make sure the horse is sound on both sides. But you trot away and you trot back. And then I believe you go this way first, and then you go that way, and they watch very, very closely. And I, I can't remember how many vets total in total watch. Do you have any idea? It's a uh, lot. It seems like five or six it, it standing looks there. Like about five hundred, and um, that's what and you do. And they actually film it too and look at it. Yeah, later yeah, they on, do. On they do, and they run it on YouTube, as we know. Yeah. And it's but it's <coughs> very interesting, especially if you've ever been to a horse show, particularly an Arabian horse show just to see how a real athlete moves compared to, you know, the pretty, pretty horses that basically just stand there and look pretty, pretty. So it's real fun. So tell us about your winning that event. Can you go back to when you, when you won the Hagen Cup and what that was like for you? <laughs> I have. Do you remember back that far? I do, I do. As a matter of fact, Jamie Kerr was the head vet that year. And they were 2001. still- 2001. 2001, it was August, third was the ride, the fourth was the judging of the Hagen Cup. And I had no idea. I was just so happy that I top ten. I, I was like doing backflips. What and place did you come in? Third. Third. And who who was the first two? Um, Marcia Smith won and Mr. Richardson was second. I was third and Judy Carnazzo was fourth. Mr. Richardson? Yes. <laughs> that fellow. <coughs> so it was an Arabian gelding, an Arabian mare, a shaggy, an Arabian and uh, I remember it very well. There's a So you did well, your horse did well. She did great, you know, I probably should give myself more credit, but I just say, you know, I just sat there and made sure he went straight. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Tony would know that that's not all It's a do. lot of work, because she was, she's a pistol. You take she's care a of pistol. the horse. You take, you care, take of the horse. care of the horse, she won't take care of you. And she was so a really- So how did you take care of her? I just made sure she didn't go real fast and stayed on track and she got all the care she needed at the vet stops and when we vetted through at Forest Hill which is what 70 miles mm -hmm. she managed to pick up a rock between her hoof <laughs> and the shoe and we're getting ready to vet through and she's standing kind of funny and somebody said Kathy I think your horse has something in her shoe and I'm like what kind of an idiot doesn't check her horse's feet and I did and there was nothing and now there's something she had this huge rock that they had to pry out. Pry out so I go ahead and I rock, vet her yeah. through, and the vet's going, you know, bring her back in an hour. So I think, well, uh, the bad news is I'm out, but the good news is I can relax now and I don't have to worry. So the hour's up, and I vet her through, and they go, you're good to go. <laughs> so away you go down the cow loop. But anyway. So this was actually good for your horse. Yeah, yeah. And I have the rock somewhere, and it was huge. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> Jeff and Dee Dee Jones, they like <coughs> inscribed That's it for not me. what you're wearing around your neck, is it? No, this is a crystal I wore when I won Tavis, though. Okay, we'll get to that in later. In 2005. We'll get but to that. But anyway, so it was just 
I had no idea that we were going to get the Tevis Cup. I was just glad to be there and, and very proud and very humble the Hagen, to be Hagen Cup. the Hagen Cup, to be in the company of these amazing riders and amazing horses. And I was just really happy. And a girlfriend I hadn't seen in forever, she was say, like, Kathy, Kathy, I heard that you got third place, and this is so cool. And, <laughs> ah. and when they announced it, they kind of, it's sort of like announcing, you know, if, if the Emmys or the Grammys, the envelope plays. And Jamie Kerr, knowing that my horse was a shaggy Arabian, there was some singing artist named Shaggy who had come out with a CD that year. I'd never heard of him. <coughs> so he puts on the Shaggy music, and some people knew this. I was clueless. And he goes, Shaggy, we're going to give the Hagen Cup to the Shaggy Arabian. I could not believe it. I think <laughs> I jumped into somebody's arms. I think it was Chuck Mather. I'm not sure, but it was really cool. And they put the ribbon around the horse's neck. And then you have to go down to the Shanghai and buy drinks for everybody. <laughs> but it was worth yeah. it. It was worth Shanghai's it. Shanghai's not there anymore. It was, <laughs> I know. It was a thrill absolutely, absolutely beyond measure. So that's more of a thrill than actually winning the, the, the ride? You know, it's, it's six of one half a dozen of another. But... I've always ridden for best condition. I don't, if I win, it's a plus, it's a bonus. I never, never ever rode to win, including the year I won. I just happened to be the first one. But top 10 is good. I always like to be top 10, and you have to be top 10 to be judged best condition. And I like to be known as somebody that takes care of their horse and doesn't ride just to win and beat them up. How could you win and not? <laughs> you, you, know, gotta funny, you gotta explain this. Funny you should ask. You start in the front and stay there. <laughs> <laughs> it's as so easy as that. Yeah. When I first started endurance riding, I used to ride my bike on centuries, which is 100 miles or 100K. And, and when I started doing endurance riding, my mom said, well, it's got to be as easy as riding a bike. You get on at mile one and off at mile 100. That's what I tell her. And I said, well, that's what I did. I just went first and stayed there. Uh, actually, the person I was riding with, his horse got pulled at the last of that stop. So Who was that? Mr. Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> that name has come up a few, t a few, t a few <laughs> times. His horse had fallen and kind of boogered up his shoulder, and they they pulled him at so the vet check at Lower Quarry, and I had to leave alone in the dark, and it was it was not easy. Let me tell you, <laughs> neither the horse nor I wanted to be alone. It's like it's hard in the dark. There's nobody out here. We're we're so you, really you said something where you said you got on and, and just stayed on till yeah, you well. got off. Now, <laughs> is that? Truly, what you did? I mean, you never. You I never get off my horse except at the vet checks. Never. I'm a hazard <coughs> off a horse. <laughs> I mean, really, I see Tom Johnson, these really good uh -huh. runners, off their horses, and I'm thinking, holy smoke, why do you bother with a horse? I mean, just go run it. <laughs> I am not good at that. I don't get <laughs> off going up the canyons. I don't get off going down uh -huh. the canyons because I'm a better rider than a runner. <laughs> I know my strong points. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so tell us a little more about the crystal that you're wearing. Yeah. I can't remember where I got it, but crystals are good luck and good energy, as you know. And I wore this um, on my, all my training rides, and I wore it when I rode the Tevis, and I had it until like eight months ago, and it miraculously fell off my chain when I was tacking up a horse just to go for a ride, and it was gone, and I thought, holy smokes, and I went out to Roper's Jeweler and had them put together another one. And I leaned down to pet my cat a couple weeks ago, and there it was. So I figure it's very good luck, and it's back. Still. Still. So I wear it every day. Oh. Well, so tell us how you got into endurance riding. When did you start? Well, let's see. Our mutual friend, may I say his name, Chris Turney. Yes. Well, yeah, Who was doing ride and ties. He, I met him through, oddly enough, a running club, the Buffalo Chips Running Club in Sacramento. And he Is had that just where you were living at the time? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. 30 years in Sacramento. Chris had just done his internship with the um, state prison system as Folsom. a teacher. Folsom. They had sent him back to Folsom, and so he showed up. I hadn't seen him. He goes, Kathy, I got a horse. As a teacher. As a teacher. Right. Yeah, not an, Folsom, inmate, yeah, not an inmate. Not an inmate. Back Big to difference. Folsom, it, yeah. a, I'm glad you <laughs> <laughs> made that. Clarify <laughs> that. So anyway, Chris said, come on out. I want you to help me ride my horse. He forgot to tell me the horse is a little bit wild and wouldn't do things like cross water. Was that or Buddy? Buddy, okay. Budweiser, Budweiser, who was a three-quarter Arab, quarter, quarter horse. So anyway, I started hanging around with Chris and Budweiser and the Postons, and we'd just go out on fun rides, and then Chris asked if I'd come crew for him on a ride in time. So what year was this, roughly? This would have been 1996, 
97, late Not 90s. that long ago. Not that long. It seems like yeah. only yesterday. That was long, that was actually so, long ago. Yeah, and then, well, maybe it was, uh, you know, how age <laughs> does have something to do with that part. And I ended up leasing a horse. It was a ride and tie horse. Bob the Wonder Horse. Edwards. No. no. He was George Putnam's horse. George the horse's Putnam. name was Lady Killer. Okay. okay. And they, somebody, the owner's wife said, he's not a lady killer. He looks like a Bob, so we called the horse Bob. <laughs> so I leased Bob with Dennis Scott. And Dennis is a runner, so I got to do all the riding, and Dennis did the running. And Back in 97? Yeah, I think so. I think it, was it was quite a while ago. So yeah. you were a runner with, through Buffalo, with Buffalo Chips? Yeah. Yeah. And so what is this? <laughs> when you told us a few minutes ago about riding the Tevis, and you're not a runner, and yet... Well, 5Ks. I was a 5K queen with the Buffalo Chips. Well, when it's only I, three miles up Devil's Thumb. Well, <laughs> 3.1 <laughs> miles, if anyone's counting it up, is the operative word there. <laughs> I would say that I started hanging around you riding type people and thought that the horse part really looked like a lot more fun than running. And, and So you made the transition? Yeah, and I met a fellow who uh, has won Tevis a couple times and started riding his horses and ended up getting married to him and then we did the Tavis together. Was that that Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. <Guy>? Richardson? <laughs> Mr. Richardson. <laughs> Tell me, yes. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> well, um, how about those giants? So anyway, it was <laughs> I, I was able to not work so I could ride horses and I was riding the horse. I was going to ride for Tevis. This was in 2001 in training, getting a couple other horses conditioned and so I just rode, 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 rode. And so did you ride when you were younger? I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That, you, I mean, were you always on? I mean, did you always have horses? I was one of those girls that it was all I thought about. It was all I thought about. Like my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it was all I could think of. You know, I, they would send me to catechism and Lutheran school, and the only reason I'd go is because I knew I'd get in trouble if I didn't. And I sat there all day and looked out the window waiting until it was over because then I could go to Griffith Park to take riding lessons. Right, okay. Oh, you were so in L.A.? I was in L.A., okay. so I took riding lessons. So were lessons. you? Yeah. Oh, so you in Griffith Park, and okay. I rode a little <laughs> chestnut gelding named Tico, and I learned my diagonals and how to post and the hands and all that show stuff. And I bought an Arabian gelding in 1972. and You're still down me. Southern California? Uh, no, I was up in Sacramento by now, and I showed okay. at Cal Expo and at uh, Ranch Hotel. Well, what brought you from Mr. LA? Richardson? <laughs> oh, from no. LA. If you want to talk about Mr. Richardson's fine, but the, the question was from LA to Sacramento. Did he, he There was, was there you was didn't, you didn't know him then. I did not. There was a four year break in Lake County and I worked for the Lake County District Attorney and I met the first love of my life who was an attorney and he moved to Sacramento and he invited me down to live with him. But as soon as I arrived, he said, you know that living with part, you know? <laughs> there's, an, uh, there's an apartment at 21st and those streets. Maybe you should live there. So I did. I moved down and brought my horse and boarded him and Carmichael. And, and um, you know, when I had no horse, I went to horse shows. And okay. just I never really got out of it. So, okay. How did you meet uh, our friend Bob Edwards? At a <laughs> That threw, I just that, love him. That, that threw you, didn't it? Because you thought I was going to... At a ride and tie, it was uh, one in Fel Felton, is that the place? Felton, yeah. It was a championship, it was a 100-mile deal, and I think I was, that's when I crewed for Melissa Ribley and Laura Kristoff, and I had my little tent set up, and I had my flamingos and a blow-up palm tree, and I was sitting cross-legged <laughs> reading Arabian Horse World with Arabian Horse Times right here, and Bob Edwards with his long gray ponytail, came sauntering up with a scotch and soda, and he said, you're pretty cute. <coughs> I think that's an Arabian Horse World magazine you're reading. I said, no, it's Arabian Horse Times, the world is here, would you like to borrow it? And he said, no, but when I'm done with this, I'd like a cold beer. <laughs> 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 Sounds like Bob. And we got along famously. May I tell you one more Bob Edwards story? Oh, at the least, the at, last le <laughs> at least. Why don't you explain who Bob Edwards is? You guys, you know him better than I. You know, yeah, well, Frank was his Bob partner for her. Actually, yeah. Bob Edwards and I. Uh, Judy. And Judy. The horse? Yes. Go oh, ahead. there's a story that um, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to go into. Maybe, maybe I could. This anyway, is Bob, than I thought. Bob, Bob, <laughs> Bob Edwards is a friend that I met when I first started in Ride and Tie. And really, he was, I think, one of my best, if not the best, Ride and Tie partner. Because we didn't have to verbalize our strategy, it just developed. 
we were both on the same page as long as we didn't make a mistake, you know, like running by your horse or, <laughs> or things like that. We Getting did, lost, we, yeah. did, we, did <laughs> we did quite well. So on, on one ride in Ty, I uh, borrowed one of his horses, which was Judy, and took, did a practice ride and tie with Judy and the horse was fine. But then at the championship, Jerome Beauchamp was, was my partner. Jerome calls that ride and tie the ride from hell. <laughs> <laughs> because the bit was probably uh -huh. not properly uh -huh. placed in her mouth and she was just wild. And so Jerome would say, I'll help you on. He, he, so he'd help me on the horse and he said, go ahead. Don't worry about tying. But we, we did some ties. But finally, after about 30 miles, Judy calmed down. And we didn't have to turn her in an opposite direction. <laughs> so, so anyway. Life got good. <laughs> but but Bob, Bob was a good friend. He's a sweetheart. And okay. he's a tall, thin fellow with gray hair and a ponytail. And you guys got to ride in a special category, the century? Is that in 100 years? Oh, uh, we were in century plus, plus. 40 <laughs> plus yeah. 50. Yeah. We, we were older it pays, <laughs> in the older it category. It to get old. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Right. <laughs> they had to create a special category yeah. for us yeah. because there was no one else yeah. near, near there. But Bob is an amazing, amazing man, and he bred some very nice horses. To this day, Sonny is living with a friend of mine, Becky Spencer. Sonny, you won oh, to us right, also. That's right, that's you right. You tied for that's the win. Right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your mom? My who? Your mother. My mother? Yes. Who passed away in 2009? Yes. Uh, she was a goddess. She walked on water. She was lovely. She, too, was a horse lady, and she was very supportive of my horse habit, except for we lived in a tract house in Van Nuys, so it was a little tough to have a horse. And my dad was LAPD, and so his salary was not such that I could buy a horse and board it but she was always very supportive and understood entirely why I would rather have horses and get married and have children and she was good with that she said if my grandchildren are foals I don't care and um, you know she when as I said when I told her I was gonna start doing endurance riding with my goal being Tavis and it was 100 miles and she took it like I said hey going to the bus stop at five o'clock call you when I get home she said just <laughs> Get on at mile one, get off at mile 100, and get there first if you can. <laughs> what kind of rider was she? She rode Western just for fun with a girlfriend of hers. Her, this girlfriend, Norma, her family had a really big ranch, a cattle ranch in Eureka. And so every summer, when school was out, they would go up to this cattle ranch and just ride horses. How fun is that, huh? They had Morgans and quarter horses. So you know when horses. she started riding? You know, I don't, but I would say probably in her early teens. Was she athletic? Yeah, she was. We water skied a lot, and she was a very good water skier. Okay. And um, until she fell real hard and kind of, she didn't break her neck, but she probably wishes she would have would have been cleaner. That kind of slowed her down, but she was always helping my dad paint houses and climbing on roofs and stuff. And She was very athletic. And your father? Uh, he was a big, stout German fellow who was a policeman with LAPD for 20 years, and couldn't understand why anyone would run just because they wanted to run or ride a bike a long way, <laughs> let alone ride a horse. In fact, when I was showing my horse, he said, Kathy, do you know what a horse show is? I say, no, Dad, what? It's a place where horses' asses take their horses' asses to show to other horses' asses. And I, all I could say was, I hope my horse has the best ass there. So, <laughs> so that was my dad. He just never could understand he the horse couldn't, thing. Do you have any never idea could. why he couldn't understand? It was a girl thing. And they were big and, you know, they took, they were a lot more trouble than cats. We always had cats. And anything that required more than crunchies and water was just too So much. he wasn't involved with horses. Not at How all. How about athletics? No. Not athletic. Whatever it took to get through the police academy and beyond that. Well, he'd water ski too, but. Okay. He built cabinets when he wasn't doing his police thing. So he okay. was, you know, he wasn't like in front of the TV and all that stuff. Do you have any idea what attracted your mother to your father? Oh, he was very handsome. They met at a bowling alley. <laughs> she had a higher average than he, so he took her out. <laughs> she said, can, Mary, can you teach me how to bowl? And she goes, well, sure. Well, by the way, would you like to marry me? No. <laughs> That's pretty much how it worked out. <laughs> okay, okay. And do you have any uh, other family? Uh, my brother who passed away a few years ago. That's it. Just me. 
And was your brother older or younger? Younger. Younger. <coughs> Four years younger. Yeah. He too was mystified by the horse thing. Okay, so you're, you then really took... The bit in my teeth, so to speak. <laughs> 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 and ran with it. And ran with it, yeah. It's yeah. a passion. You're born with it or you're not. I mean, you cannot just say you like horses and pretend. As you guys know, it's a lot of work. And you develop. if you do it right, you develop a very good relationship with your horse and an element of trust because you do a lot of riding at night and you really have to know each other and trust each other. And it's a, a relationship unlike any other. Before we go to that, you were born with motorcycles. <gasps> You. Well, you got I over love. it. <laughs> yeah, you, you had the love for motorcycles before you had love for horses. Well, that's because I married someone that had a love for horses, and she was the same thing. Kind of, she yeah. grew up, and all yeah. she wanted to do is she went to Al Root, Hal Roots, which is here in Sacramento. Uh -huh. That's where she took lessons as a little, you know, little girl, and you know, a small girl. And in fact, uh, Janet, you know, Janet Pucci. Sure. She took lessons at the exact same place. Really? Yeah. Really? It was kind of funny okay. when we met her. It was, it, was, it was funny. But yeah, she just loved horses. And so we got married. She just always was taking lessons, wanted to get a horse. So we bought her a horse when we moved to Elk Grove. And I was still racing motorcycles. And I just got. Never knew that. You know, I like the horses too. I mean, I like the animals. And, uh, and I just got tired of racing motorcycles and came home and told her I was selling the bike and buying a horse. That must have been a happy day for her. <laughs> she didn't, you know, I could spend any amount of money on the horse that I wanted to, but if I bought one spoke for that bike, <laughs> it was too much. You know? <laughs> so it worked out great. I actually. don't see a problem with that. <laughs> it was, no, all. she didn't either. <laughs> well, another thing with we horse owners, <clears throat> we will literally starve ourselves before we'll let our horses go without supplements, shoes, good tack, whatever it takes. They come first. Yeah, you mentioned riding at night. Can you talk a little bit about that with the Tevis? Because you talked about when you had <coughs> to leave Potato, Mr. Richardson, yeah. and ride by yourself. Can you talk about that night experience? Um, riding at night on Fifi was not bad. Riding at night on a gelding, I started, I've started Tevis five times and finished three. The two times I got pulled was on my gelding, Zaruska HCC. And he was kind of a stumble bum when it was light, and he was known to take the wrong turn. And I rode out of... Forest Hill, down the cow loop, in the dark, and it was just nightmarish. And I, by this time, I had three juniors in tow because they'd worn out one sponsor. <laughs> and I'd pick them up at Michigan Bluff. It's, it's difficult if you have a horse that's not maybe as sure on his feet at night as he should be. But on the, both the mares I rode, they were fine at night. And you just, again, you have to trust your horse because their vision is like, what, 10 times better at night than ours? Yeah, well. Must be the carrots. Yeah. And so you just <laughs> never question them. Just ride with the loose rein. They don't rain. wear glasses. They, yeah, <laughs> contacts, they all have contacts. Right. Just ride with loose rein, sit back, keep your balance, because by the time it's dark, you've put in a lot of miles, and you're tired, and the last thing your horse needs is an unbalanced rider who's kind of skitzy and not sure of what's mm -hmm. going on. So the advice I could give would be just relax and put your horse in the driver's seat, drop the reins. I always hang on to a bunch of mane by the withers just in case I fall asleep, start to crash off. And just let them do what they do best, and they will, they'll be just fine. They know what to do. Well, how did you get in shape to ride Tevis? I you had to run more than You had to run more than 5K. Oh, well, I rode every day, almost every day, and I was getting other horses ready in addition to my mare because we would lease out one or two horses, and so I'd have to get them ready when the riders came from back east. They wanted a horse that they could get on and ride, and it made sense because they'd pay a lot of money. So I'd ride a horse and come back and you know, take it easy, cool off, drink a lot of water and get back on and ride another horse and repeat as needed. Do you have any idea how many miles per week you rode? I would say, what's 30 times seven? Probably, I rode probably 30 miles a day, six days a week. Easily. Really? Yeah. That's a lot of miles. I mean, That's when, a lot. Wouldn't you say actually the training is harder than oh, the ride? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. that's what I thought. I mean, yeah. the, when you get to the ride, the ride seems... It's well, like downhill from yeah, there. It's like know, a piece of cake. You know, you're out there for <laughs> 16, 20 yeah. hours, but it's not nearly as, as time-consuming as yeah. it's all the training you do beforehand. Yeah, and once you're done, you're done. When yeah. you're done with the training <laughs> ride, you get to do another training ride. And another one, when people ask, here's your question, what's the toughest thing about Tevis? <laughs> that's your question. My answer is getting a sound horse to the starting line. Right. That is just huge to keep them sound, to keep you sound, 
everybody's ready to do the trailer ride up there and get the horse out of the trailer without getting hurt. I've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. And keep your wits about you when you vet through and hope a bear doesn't come ca through camp to keep your horses up all night so they're like tired and nervous at the start. That's no. You have any, so what endurance rides did you do with your, when you won the Tevis in 2005 prior to the Tevis, do you remember? Uh, Death Valley Encounter, three out of four days. Um, Cooley Ranch. Is that a Scots, 50? Yeah, Cooley Ranch. Everything was a 50, e okay. except Tevis was my first and only 100. Um, Scott's Flat, Cooley Ranch, um, Camp Far West, Lake Oroville. Let's see, what else? There's got to be more. <laughs> That's all That's I can That's four. Yeah. And in those days, you didn't have to qualify. You just signed up and went. Okay, what about the Hagen Cup? How many? Do you remember how many endurance rides you did oh. that? Again, year? it was Death Valley, and uh, what was the one? The one that oh, Wild West, Robert and Melissa's ride. Uh -huh. Two or three days on that. Um, I can't remember what else. Oh, um, there was <laughs> there was a ride called the uh, oh the Western States Fifty Five, and it replicated the last part of Tevis. Do you remember that one? We'd start at noon at Devil's Thumb, and ride the last fifty miles of Tevis. Right, so you'd so come you'd be in at in the night. Dark, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. That was right before then, and I think that was it. Uh -huh. But we got top ten in best condition. I just thought that's how it was. Oh, well, top ten BC. Yeah, on another day. I didn't know. <laughs> I did not know how lucky I was. I had a, a very gifted, talented mare. She, Faye, was just amazing. That was the. The Shaggy Arabian. The Shaggy. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is that your favorite? Fifi was my favorite. Fifi's favorite. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And how are you spending your time now? I work for a law firm and I ride when I can. I've got one Arabian gelding. I'm fortunate enough to be able to ride right out my backyard. I'm on a dirt road and I can ride from my house to Auburn, Tahoe, Sacramento. And I'm very involved with community radio. Thanks for asking. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, may I? Yeah. It's KFOK, LPFM Georgetown, 95.1 on your <laughs> FM dial, www.kfok.org. I do a show on Fridays with my boyfriend called Fathead Radio. It's a takeoff on KFAT out of Gilroy, <laughs> which has been off the air 30 years, but we refuse to die. And <laughs> did I say we're on from 9 to noon? And then every other Saturday, as of this Saturday, I do my own show, which is Kathy's Red Dirt Roadhouse. And I play music guaranteed to rock your socks off. If I can't play something that makes you call and say, what the heck is that? I have not done my job. <laughs> and I love it. I'm the events coordinator for the station. My sweetheart is in charge of, we've got an adopt a highway mile, and he's in charge of that. So we go out once a month and pick up trash on the highway with our little Caltrans <laughs> outfits and the helmets that are no good, except if you got hit, it would say the trajectory. <laughs> but it's real fun. I love community radio. It's a great family, and uh, mm -hmm. we're the voice of the divide, the home of good taste. How long have you been doing that? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah, really? since I was one of the first broadcasters. So then you moved up here from Sacramento at least 10 years ago. In though. 2001. Yeah, t 2001. And KFOC went on the air 10 years ago. We celebrated our 10th anniversary. Wow, okay. Actually, it's been almost 11 years, but I've been there since day one, okay. and it's wonderful. Okay. I started with a talk show called Horse Talk, and it was a failure. <laughs> <laughs> and what, kind, what, kind of failure? what kind of failure? Well, nobody called in, for starters, and oh, so I had to make up those. stuff. Okay. <laughs> and, and I have to not be breed specific, and you know, I have to be, be what genres not specific. So I had to talk about things other than endurance and Arabians, and it was just too tedious. So I played more music and talked less, and pretty soon I asked the program committee, can I just quit the horse talk and start my own show? And uh -huh. So here I am. And it's real fun. And again, thanks for asking. It's very important. Okay. And I love it. What are your goals now? Oh, um, with horses or just life in general? Life in general. To stay above ground for another 10 or so years. Or 20. Which is it? I know. To be as old and happy as Bob Edwards. That's my goal. He's my hero. All right. You guys are my heroes. Uh, we're not that old. I know. We're just kids. Can you believe we've made it this far? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't. People say, how old are you? And I tell them, and they go, nah. -uh. Could be your grandma. Yep. <laughs> mm. So how are you um, accomplishing that goal? What are you doing to 
make that happen? Be healthy? Well, what are you doing? I have a protein shake every morning and do uh, 200 sit-ups and a lot of stretches. And I still I run every morning. I know, hard to believe. I do, I do. <laughs> Where do you run? Well, from my house. It's up and down, up and down. I walk the uphills. I'm not embarrassed to say that. But okay. I only work four days a week, so I only run on the days I work. But I'm very consistent. I run rain or shine, sleet or snow. I get up at five, take care of my animals, go for my run, come home and shower, do my stretches, go to work, come home, ride my horse if I have time. And okay. I have a very good group of friends, and we do things okay. together, like, okay. you know, go out to dinner and go camping and things like that. And I still am involved in endurance to the extent that I like to be the secretary for the vets. Well, tell us about last Saturday uh, then. Last Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday, I me. scribed for Melissa Ribley, who is one of the smartest, most adorable people in the world. She knows her stuff and she is so willing to share. So we show up on Friday, left my radio show, went up to Drew Barner Park, set up my little tent cot, Got out of Arabian Horse World, <laughs> looked for Bob Edwards, he wasn't there. He didn't show up. He didn't show. At 3 o'clock, you start to vet in horses. And Do you want me to go into the details yes, of vetting yeah, in? Yes, yes. Every rider has a vet card. I have my clipboard, and the vet says, come on up. You get the rider's card, and the vet does, as described earlier, takes the pulse and goes through all the stuff, and you get A's, B's, C's on various and sundry, you know, hydration, gut sounds. I forgot the gut sounds. That's usually important. And they trot the horses up and back, and it's so much fun to watch because I consider it a moving horse show. I just love to watch the horses. And you vet through until about 8 that night, and then get up the next morning and vet through any horses that haven't shown up. And then you take off for a vet check. Ours was Darling Ridge, and we were there from 9 o'clock until 6.30 that night. And just it's a and long it's, day. It's fun. Yeah. It's a long day. But it's really fun because all the Gold Country Endurance riders and all my pals show up, mm -hmm. and... We all have our Tavis buckles, so <laughs> the people riding know we're not just, you know, people off the streets. We're Tavis <laughs> finishers, I want you to know. And it's just a blast. Everybody helps, you know, they bring you food and stuff, and I get to sit there with the vets and listen to them talk about horse stuff, and it's just a blast. And, you know, visit with the riders when they come through because everybody's happy to get there. We were at mile 44 out of a 50-mile ride, so okay. they were, it was downhill from there, and, and it was really fun. And, one of my good friends got best condition on that ride. Who was that? Nancy Gabry. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Really? She we got saw BC, Nancy. Yeah. We did get to see Nancy. On her cute horse. He, I gave him the best forelock <laughs> award. He's got this big, beautiful, black, flowing forelock. And he looks so good, and he holds his tail up. And I said, Nancy, that horse has got best condition tail carriage. And then she got BC. But it was fun. I love, I love to guess the bloodlines. You know, people come through, especially if it's a big chestnut horse with high white. I'll say, is that a crabbit horse? How did you know? How do you know? I do well because I study my bloodlines. I've been doing this since 1967. 1967. Study, studying bloodlines. I picked up Arabian Horse World in the Silmar High School Library in 1967 oh. when Fajr was on the cover, and I've subscribed ever since. And I just I keep still track. I have a son. You do not. I he do. must be ancient. He's 35 years old. Good night. <laughs> That's dang old. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I did not know that. Is he bay? He's so a his bay. tail goes straight up and big eyes? Big eyes. There bay, you go. There you go. And Tevis on him three times. <laughs> so much fun. I mean, how can you not love Arabian horse pedigrees? Most people just think <laughs> they tune out after buy so and so out of so and so. It's like, just shut up. Go away. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you didn't know that. A little known facts. <coughs> As I always ask you, Gypsy's bloodlines were. Remember, you said she's French, and I. She's French. Yeah. She's French. <laughs> she's French. What more do you need That's to know? Be more specific. <coughs> well, I'm not into bloodlines. I know. I, I know most people I know, aren't. I know, I know you were. Well. And I d was curious as to how you got into that. That's. It. I just found it fascinating. Just and I went to a lot of shows. I've gone to the nationals several times just to watch and um, the big I would go to every class A show in Northern California mm. I went so far as to date a trainer <laughs> so <laughs> I went to the Nationals with him in 1973 and in Oklahoma City and it was pretty exciting so you really are a horse lady yeah. I didn't realize it went back that far yeah just I hit the ground trotting <laughs> hit the ground hit prancing the ground. yes prancing <laughs> trotting trotting okay and do you want to know why I like Arabs? No. 
Sure. sure. They're the best breed there is. They're smart, they're personable, being raised in tents, kind of carried down through the, mm -hmm. the decades. They live longer, as you know, and they're just pretty and well suited for endurance. And their upkeep is a lot less. They don't what makes them well suited for endurance? Short, strong backs, strong bone. Their bone is as hard as ivory. They usually, the good endurance horses have a short cannon bone, so there's not as much room for injury. Their tail carriage is high to cool them off. They have a higher set neck, so the air just comes in through those big nostrils and just goes straight to their lungs. They usually have bigger hearts. They have well-sprung ribs, so they can carry those big lungs, and they just take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's that? That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> and their skin is really fine, and their, their hair is real fine and silky to help dissipate the heat and reflect the sun in the desert. And their feet, by and large, are very healthy, hard, good, sound feet. Because if you, what's the saying, no hoof, no horse? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why. And they're just sweet, friendly horses. So you've always had an Arab? <coughs> yeah. So you wouldn't have another breed then? Well, you know. <clears throat> Funny you should ask. I, w I came very close to turning my Arabians in for a standard bread, not a saddle bread, a standard bread off the track. In fact, I ride her still in the States. Paul when Dom's mare. When was thinking. this? A couple years ago. Okay, not, not yeah. too long After ago. After I lost Fifi in the divorce and I had no horse, and Paul Dom's is letting me ride his, his big old standard bread mare, and she is sweet. You can let her stand for a year and get her on her. It's like you rode her yesterday. And they're just really, they're nice horses. They're my second choice. But they're not good 100 mile horses. They're too big. So, how hard was that divorce? Harder than riding Tavis. <laughs> it was very difficult. Very, very difficult. difficult. Mm -hmm. I lost everything. That's why I'm working. You haven't lost everything. Well, I've got my personality, my sunny disposition, my good outlook on life. And yeah. uh, I ended up out of 23 horses that we had at the time, I got one lame gelding. That's the truth. Well, that's that's sad, sad to hear Let's see. That. Profit and pension sharing gone. What else? Um, I got some money out of the house we had, and that's about it. But it's okay. It's behind me. Well, you still have a um, sunny disposition. How? Uh, it How? <laughs> explain, explain that to me. Every day, every day you wake up on the right side of the dirt, it's pretty good. Uh -huh. You just have to take it from there. You know? I. What is it Monty Python says, look on the bright side? Seriously, if you don't look on the bright side, you're going to look on the gloomy side. And if you look on the gloomy side, you're going to be gloomy. And who wants to be yeah. around gloomy people? But really. Kathy, you, you went through divorce and your mom's passing too. And My really brother mom in rapid succession. And I, okay, I didn't know about the brother. Yeah, it was like so boom, boom, boom. Tell me how. Community how radio. How, okay. <laughs> really, it saved me. It saved me. It really saved tell my us sanity. About, tell us about that. After my brother was the first to go, he passed in um, November of 2008. From what? Alcoholism. Mm. Alcoholism. He drank himself to death. Okay. And it was it was difficult. He was my younger brother, and yeah, I could see it coming. But when it finally comes, it was like tough to watch. It was tough. It was tough, and it was especially hard on my mom. And so I just we did not have a full broadcast calendar, and I just took my bag of music and went in to K Folk and went on air and just. Did shows. That was therapeutic. It was very therapeutic, and same thing when I lost my mom. And oddly enough, my at this time boyfriend, when his wife of 27 years and four kids walked out, he did the same thing. He went on, went on the radio. He said, "You know, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm just going to go do a show." So where you met him? Yes. Okay. Yeah, as a matter. So what'd your mom die from? Uh, she had a stroke that turned out to be very bad. And uh, she had a stroke in mid-August, and she passed on September 11th of 2009. So it was pretty quick. And her, a, her age? She was, she was 80. She 80, just turned okay. 80 in November and then the following August, so she didn't make it to 81. Mm -hmm. That was Lake, wasn't she living in Lake County? She was living in Lake County at yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So the radio show gave you structure? It does. and. People involved, it's much like endurance, everybody involved with community radio, you've got a common goal, a common passion, and it, it's a true passion. And everybody really looks out for everybody and helps one another. And it's something, you know, if you're a broadcaster, nobody else in your family understands. It's like, I don't know why you're so hap on getting up early and going to the station, lugging boxes of music. <laughs> and it, it just, it's a common 
thread that you have that's not through blood, you know, not through other friendships. It's something totally different, and it's very special. It goes along with the quote. Which was, the oh, quote. that first one? Yeah. <gasps> did I do it? Did, did I? It. Did the circle remain unbroken? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long quote. You should have read that to me on the hall so I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the idea, is, is to do it <coughs> so you're not prepared. And, and Thank heavens. Well, after somebody who gives everybody the wrong directions, if I ever did the show, that. if this I chair did, is I blank. Did, I did that. I did that. I, did. I am the guest who did not get lost. <laughs> okay. All right, so the show gave you some structure and some meaning Yeah. during that time. Yeah, and a good outlook. You know, it's a lot of people go out and run real hard and fast and get over things, but I just... I, and I, I will still to this day use my horse as therapy, but there's something about stepping into that radio station. As soon as you put on your headphones, oop, you shut the little broadcast booth door, and, and I always start my show with the band of Would you like some headphones? I, they're in my car, because <laughs> <laughs> I've got a show tomorrow. Um, there's just something magical. There's no other word for it. It's just, it's like the minute you step in that saddle and you get going, you know, all the stress and worries and cares of the world, just poof. It's the best thing in the world. I were mean you, it. <laughs> were you surprised how difficult the, those past few years have been? I'm surprised I made it, quite frankly. Sometimes I look back and it's like, holy smokes, how do you just, yeah, I'm very surprised. But I got out of bed every day and just kept keeping on, keeping on. And I was very very fortunate when I had to go back to work. I found a good job with some wonderful people, and I'm still good friends with those people to this day, even though the law firm is dissolved. But my friend Cindy, with whom I work, she and her mom were involved with endurance, and so, I mean, we just got along like we'd known each other forever, and it was a blessing. How did you find the strength to get out of bed and continue on? It beat the alternative. <laughs> Really, no, no. it's the alternative. I mean, seriously, you lie in bed some days. It's like I just can't, I can't face this one more time. Not one more time. And then you think, well, okay, you can either succumb and then he wins, or you can get up, land on your feet, and keep going, and keep your your friends and limited family, and just keep going. And I do have a very supportive, close knit group of friends that I've had for 30 years. Some of them, I'm still in close contact with my friend from high school. And we graduated from high school See, in this is the quote. This is all yeah. about the quote. Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. I am friends with all my ex-boyfriends, except for my ex-husband. I mean, we're good friends. You love mm -hmm. them at one time, still pals. And, you know, I had dinner last night with some friends I met in 1989 through the Buffalo Chips Running Club. and kind of branched out into the Hash House Harriers, <laughs> the crazy beer you drinkers. Went that direction. I <laughs> love the Hashers. They are, they're, they're just incredible people. But it, I have really good friends that have maintained contact, and, and they're, they're pillars of strength. I want to hear about that, but I also want to hear more about your self-talk during that, during that, those conversations you had during that time period. You say, Kathy, that, you're a better person than this. You're German by, by, by descent, and you've got to do what the German people told you to do, and that's just one foot in front of the other. Only the weak quit. you just got to do it, got to do it, got to do it, because ultimately, you have to look at yourself in the mirror every day. And if you're not happy, if you're not strong, if you're not willing to keep going, you've got nothing. I don't care how much money you have, what you've got, if you've got your health and a good attitude, and a good attitude will bring health. And if you don't have good health, a good attitude will help deal with it. It just, it, it gets you through. And that's all you can do. And it, it literally is one step at a time. And there comes a point at which you get out of bed one day and you look back and you go, I did that? I did that? I mean, to this day, I still don't believe I went to have this. Yeah. <laughs> People will say, oh my gosh, you went to have this? Yeah, yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I really did. did. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now, that <clears throat> first place thing. And, you know, just getting through a, a pretty unpleasant divorce but where do you think you learned that from that my parents that toughness? my parents both yeah yeah my mom was you know it was she was a gentler and you know just keep pushing you but my dad you know a, a policeman seriously all our friends were policemen so it was all of those kids it was like 
you will <laughs> do this. And I'm not making that up. When we learned how to water ski, if you weren't paying attention, Dad would hit you in the head with the ski ropes. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> okay. so you're going to pay attention now? Yeah, and I mean, I don't mean to, he, he was a really wonderful, very loving person, but he, mm -hmm. he taught you lessons, and it's like, you're going to learn it. I'm not going to tell you twice. And you know what? You learn. <laughs> and you got good grades in school, and you went to school every day. If you were sick, you better be really sick. You better be bleeding, or else you're going to school. You're going to do your homework. You're going to do well. Once you're out of high school, my job is done. Good luck, go. <laughs> hmm. But that's, pr that's where I got my strength. was from my parents. Okay. So they were tough, too. They were good disciplinarians, but, you know, the love was there. It was never... Well, a tough in a positive way. Yeah, but you know what? I think that's good. They gave structure and meaning, and there was just no other choice. You just did it. It wasn't like, oh, gee, do I have to do this? It's like, yeah, you have to do mm -hmm. this. <laughs> so you had to get through this. Yeah, then it carries on, and I thank them every day for that. Uh-huh. So you still miss your mom? You know, Frank, you don't make me cry. I bet once a week, easily, mm. something, you know, I'll see something wonderful or, or you know, I'll, something happens and I'll think, I can't wait to call my mom. Yeah, that's the difference. Mm. We're, we're all with this same thing. Tony lost his mom last year, too. And you never get over it. You think you about them every call, day. You and you shouldn't. You can't call. Yeah, yeah. You can't call. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. My friend Cindy, <clears throat> with whom I used to work, she lost her mom right before I lost my mom, and I kind of helped her through that. And um, I got a lot, of, a lot of insight from that. And when Cindy and I get to talk, get together to this day, we'll talk about our moms. And you know, it's the same deal. You're always wanting to pick up the phone, and when the phone rings, it's like, gosh, I hope that's my mom. And yeah. It's tough, because they were your mother. And yeah. it, I'm sorry to hear that, but, yeah. but they're right she here. She lived a long, wonderful life, and yeah. she got to choose basically when she died. Did she really? Which was That's a very gift. fortunate. Yeah. yeah. No one chose it for her. She yeah. In a way she chose it herself. Yeah. And you know you just you know, I miss my dad too, but you know, a mom's a mom. There's mom's a different Yeah. Different. Well Kathy, it's been a um, fun for me and getting to know more about you. How about that, yeah. <laughs> getting yeah. to know you. <laughs> Keep the day job. <laughs> so, so really, I'm very pleased that you were available to come on the show today. I'm pleased I found the place. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. In sorry. spite of all sorry, this, spite you need of to tie some ribbons something like out there that. so yeah, we put, know where to turn. Put some chalk marks on some the Some chalk ground. marks, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's well, this yeah. is the week of, this week, this is the month of Tavis. Mm -hmm. So next week we're going to have Merv Pryor on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to have uh, Tom Kristoff on uh, after, after that. So we'll be talking more about Tevis, more about the horses, and more about you. The r you, you and the, the individuals that come on and find out a little bit more about everybody and what makes what you makes us tick. Yeah. What makes yeah. you yeah. tick. Yeah. Because that's what this is. What yeah. this is all about. I know. We're not gods. We just happen to have good horses and got there before everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm pleased. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you for letting me chat about community radio. It's all community. 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 This is community. Yes. Calm is in yes. together. Yes. Unity. <laughs> there you go. Loved it. <laughs> there, they just